When Masters of the Universe Revelation opened in 2021, the hype was real. The all-time fans were there and ready for it, and Season 1 Part 1 opened in the Netflix Top 10. That didn't last long though, as a horrified fan base soon learned that Netflix had done to He-Man what Kathleen Kennedy had done to Star Wars in The Last Jedi. Freaking out over the backlash, Kevin Smith immediately went out on a not-apology-but-let-me-explain tour, but ultimately to no avail, as Season 1 Part 2 never trended anywhere, as the fan base was so disgusted they had collectively checked out. Since then, the showrunners have promised that they've made adjustments for Season 2, but how is that going to help when they never understood exactly what was wrong with Season 1? Season 2, dubbed Masters of the Universe Revolution, drops today, January 25th. Given the size of the dormant fan base that showed up for the premiere of the first season, hype should have been through the roof, but instead, it's non-existent. The trailer for this season looked good, but then again, the trailer for the first season looked even better, so no one is falling for that again. Netflix are obviously aware of that, as the only press leading up to the release has been defensive. Worse still, that press clearly communicates to the fans that they've learned nothing and completely misunderstood why fans were so appalled by Season 1. SFX and Games Radar had an exclusive interview with Kevin Smith and Ted Biaselli, and long-time watchers will know this already. But new viewers of this channel may be interested to learn that Kevin Smith is the showrunner in name only. The real showrunner and shot caller, the one Kevin Smith defers to, is this other guy, Ted Biaselli. Most of those bad decisions that you blame Kevin Smith for were in reality Ted Biaselli's decisions. He, more than anyone else, is to blame for what went wrong with this iteration of Masters of the Universe. This paid-for puff piece masquerading as an interview then, with showrunner in name only Kevin Smith and his boss Ted Biaselli, is titled Masters of the Universe Bosses Promise Lots of He-Man in Netflix Revolution as they defend his absence in the last chapter. That right there is them doing all over again, only in print this time, what Kevin Smith already tried to do prior to the release of Season 1 Part 2. That is, promise more He-Man and rather than admit any wrongdoing, defend their actions. Which is tantamount to claiming the fans were simply wrong to react the way they did. So, let's see what they all had to say for themselves. The piece begins. When the first half of Masters of the Universe Revelation premiered in July of 2021, some fans were not pleased. That's a sanitation at best and an outright lie at worst, because it wasn't that some fans were not pleased. That wouldn't have been an issue. No, the real problem is that the vast, overwhelming majority of fans were flat out appalled. That clarification out of the way, let's move on. He-Man, it turns out, was barely in it, while Sorceress Tila took over as the series' central character. Now, in the run-up to New Outing Revolution, the Netflix show's bosses have promised fans the character will feature much more in the fresh batch of episodes. Yeah, you see there, that's them not understanding the problem. I'm not saying that the lack of He-Man's screen time wasn't an issue, but it was an incidental issue. I mean, imagine if all else had been equal, but He-Man would have had 10 extra minutes of being cucked and humiliated in each episode. Would that have changed anything? No, it wouldn't, because the fundamental problem was the story they chose to tell, how they told it, and what was done to He-Man in the process. If they haven't figured out those far more severe foundational and structural issues, then increasing He-Man's screen time is like putting lipstick on a cancel pig. Not gonna help. This is a story that's going to explore what it means to be He-Man when a new responsibility falls on Adam, says executive producer Ted Biaselli. Well, sound the red alert. That right there is Ted Biaselli signaling that he was the one that came up with this story, just like he by all accounts did in the first season as well. He continues, I think it's really interesting to explore what it's like when, as an adult, you know what you want to do, and your parents also have expectations for you. How do you reconcile with that? 
Well, Mr. Biaselli, without any further comment about what kind of relationship you must have with your parents, I'll tell you how most fans are going to reconcile with that, namely by not watching this in the first place. If Biaselli had any sense, he would have stepped back after season one, as the worldwide He-Man audience collectively rejected what he thought was interesting to explore back then. But nope, he's still there, injecting what he thinks it would be really interesting to explore, even though no one else does, certainly not with the execution of his ideas, which are bad in the first place. They are so bad, in fact, that Mr. Biaselli is the direct reason why the producers behind the in-development Conan the Barbarian series took it away from Netflix. That was an exclusive scoop of ours, by the way. Click the link on screen or video in the description for more details on that, and what Arnold Schwarzenegger's King Conan would have been if it had been made, which it won't be. But let's get back to this He-Man story. While Biaselli, fellow EP Rob David, and showrunner Kevin Smith look to have taken the backlash on board and adjusted the ongoing story accordingly, Kevin Smith has no regrets about having He-Man take a bit of a backseat in Revelation. I know there are a lot of people that went after Revelation for putting Tila first or whatever, but we didn't, Smith explains. Tila was as much a part of the story as she's always been part of the story. Yeah, we know that, Kevin. Exploring Tila's relation to the Sorceress and her destiny to become the next was never the issue. On the contrary, fans wanted to see that story, just not in the way you chose to tell it. And it wasn't just He-Man that was screwed over. Tila was made an entitled, unlikable bitch in the process. I thought it would be a cool aspect of storytelling to remove the center of our universe for a few episodes and then bring him back. That wasn't me going, let's break this franchise by any stretch of the imagination. But, just like Piacelli, what Smith thought would be cool was in reality anything but. Granted, none of them may have set out with the intention to break the franchise, yet as a direct result of their shoddy decision-making, that is nonetheless exactly what they did. Smith then concludes, People who wanted to attack the show were like, they killed He-Man. But it wasn't as if Mattel or Netflix were saying, here man, go kill a franchise for us. That's why we brought you here. Naturally, He-Man was always going to come back. Except, he didn't come back. Not really. Millions of viewers around the world saw Season 1 Part 1, but as evidenced by Season 1 Part 2 never trending, most of them never returned to see him come back to life. As such, the last thing most audiences saw of He-Man was Adam getting prison shanked. That was the last draw, and they never returned. Want to know just how fateful that was? Well, prior to that, Netflix were not only developing a new He-Man series for kids, they were also developing a live-action He-Man movie for the masses, which was intended to kick off a series of movies. I say that in the past tense, because they pulled the plug on that this summer, after already having spent 30 million developing it, and you can rest assured that they would never have taken that 30 million dollar bath if there was any kind of interest in Masters of the Universe revelation on their servers, but there isn't. Between them, Ted Biaselli and Kevin Smith killed He-Man, and however much they may think they brought him back, they didn't, not in any way that matters. And if the leaks reported by Clownfish TV are accurate, I remain unconvinced that Season 2 is going to change that. Or do you think it could? Do you even intend to see it to find out? Let me know in the comments.